Thank you for being here. Uh, so to start, could you just briefly introduce yourself, uh, your name, and then your background and experience as well, please? Uh, my, my name's Ian Livingston. Mm -hmm. I retired in August of 2023 as the Chief Constable of the Police Service of Scotland. It's a national police service that covers all of Scotland. There's 23,000 people and covers a third of the UK landmass, second largest police service in, in the United Kingdom. Um, after I retired, I served over 31 years as a police officer. Um, I was asked in October of last year to take on the role of officer and overall command of Operation Canova. And Canova deals with a number of very complex matters relating to the troubles mm -hmm. in Northern Ireland um, during the 70s and, and the 80s and, and through to the 1990s. Mm -hmm. Perfect, thank you. So our question for you today is, um, could you explain how support to victims is changing within British policing? And additionally, could you elaborate on the benefits of engagement with governments, NGOs, charities and family support services? The work that we have done in Northern Ireland, uh, I, I feel, has, has, has really been uh, groundbreaking in as much that mm. the challenges of investigating what took place during uh, over 30 years of the troubles are, are enormous. Mm. And we've dealt with families and victims who have never had any contact from state agencies in, in some instances. And when there was contact, they were extremely negative. There was no sense of empathy or, or support. And it, and it meant that families and victims, not only had they suffered a loss, but they also weren't treated with dignity and respect from agencies of the state who, whose responsibility it is to, to protect them. So when we went into this work, we knew it was enormously challenging. Operation Canova looks at issues that involve state actors, so some of it involves the collusion of security forces with paramilitaries, mm -hmm. and at other times it involves informants high up in paramilitary groups such as the IRA or, or the Ulster Volunteer Force, mm -hmm. and how those informants or agents were, were handled, and again, you know, did the state allow harms to take place because their main priority was to try and protect this information source that, that they had. Mm -hmm. So when we went into this work, we knew that the relationships with victims and families, gaining their trust, gaining uh, their confidence, uh, was be enormously challenging. And we based that not only on the unique circumstances that relate to the troubles in Northern Ireland, but actually our experience of family liaison and family support in, in the United Kingdom. And the fundamental case in British policing and UK policing is the murder of Stephen Lawrence mm -hmm. in London in 1993, the racist murder of Stephen Lawrence, where the Metropolitan Police response, and everybody recognises this, was inadequate. Mm -hmm. There was a lack of support to the family. Uh, there was a lack of respect for Stephen and his family and, and, and his wider friends and, and community. And it, and it not only meant that the investigation wasn't successful, but there was a, a massive um, drop in confidence and, and support for, for policing. Mm -hmm. Now, the report that came from that was a public inquiry led by Sir William McPherson, and that made a number of recommendations for policing, but a key part of that, a key part of it was the introduction of families on officers and the need for families on to be at the heart of, of an investigation into homicide or a, or, a, or a serious crime. And since that time, family liaison and, and FLOs, as we call them in, in the United Kingdom, flows have become a, a, a key part of criminal investigation, a fundamental part um, of the police capability to investigate serious crime. And their role is to support the families, but they're also there as investigators, because very often the family have some information around the, the, the victim, some, some piece of information that would assist us uh, to, to identify the perpetrator. And only by gaining the trust and confidence of the family can we get that information. So family liaison is ethically the right thing to do, but actually as an investigative approach and strategy is crucial as well. It's crucial for the police to be able to do their job properly. Mm -hmm. So that was 1993, but, but since that time, there's been a number of other critical cases where Again, across the whole of the United Kingdom, there's been a breakdown in relationship with, with the family. And, and instances of that could be the, the murder of Emma Caldwell in Glasgow in, in 2005. Emma had a heroin addiction and ended up doing sex work. Um, and again, poor work from 
officers in Scotland uh, led to the offender who has who has very recently been identified and convicted continuing to be at large and continuing to reoffend over that period. And it takes you right through even to the current day where the murder of Sarah Everard, uh, the murders committed by Stephen Port of, of four gay men in, in London in 2014-15, and the inability to properly identify people who needed support or, or to properly recognise uh, that victims and their families need to be at the heart mm -hmm. of every investigation. So that's what's happened in Northern Ireland through our approach to Operation Canova. Enormously challenging. Some of the families, some of the communities we've engaged with uh, for understandable reasons um, were very antagonistic. They did not want to speak to authorities, agents, or, uh, agencies working as they saw it for the British government. Uh, the officers involved, we had to be wholly independent of Northern Ireland. So we were all from Scotland and England. But, but again, in the eyes of, of some of the families in the communities, we were coming in, we were outsiders. So we worked extremely hard. We had enormous support from a number of NGOs and, and multiple uh, support groups and networks. Because what we realised, and, and, and again, it's a statement of fact and obvious to say, but you know, there is no one size fits all mm. for a family or a victim. And actually, we need to listen to families and victims. We need to hear what they have to say. And we need to allow them to shape our approach and ask them what outcomes they wish. Because they don't necessarily always wish a criminal justice outcome. What everybody wants is the truth and honesty. And, and that's what Canova has undertaken to do. We've learned from the past about mistakes that have been made. I'm sure we didn't get everything right in the, in the complexity of this work. We've had to deal with almost 200 murders across decades and investigating the past, investigating legacy of Northern Ireland is enormously challenging. But throughout these challenges, we've always put victims and families at the heart of that. And I think that's something that will stand further investigations and, and further uh, reconciliation efforts in Northern Ireland in good stead going forward.